Among uh, President-elect Trump's latest picks for his administration, Kanner Fitzgerald CEO Howard Lutnick is going to head the Commerce Department. Former uh, wrestling executive and SBA Small Business Administration leader Linda McMahon is going to be Secretary of Education. Uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz is going to lead the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, Trump's pick for the Secretary of the Treasury still appears uh, to be fluid and up in the air, though the Financial Times is now reporting private equity uh, billionaire Mark Rowan has emerged as a top contender. Uh, joining us now to talk about how the incoming administration is taking shape, West Virginia Senator uh, Shelley Moore Capito. She's the incoming Republican uh, Policy Committee chair. And uh, I don't know, I, I guess there's about 15 different names. We can, we can go wherever you want with this. Do you, do you have any insight into to Treasury at this point, uh, Senator, or, or you know well, what we know? Uh, I sort of know what you know. I will say it's going to be an exceedingly important uh, appointment because of uh, what the president ran on. He ran on uh, uh, economic uh, growth and uh, world dominance in terms of our own energy and also our own economics. So I think he's looking probably at each of these candidates carefully to see how they will, will fit in and what, what, uh, what their past has shown that they can move forward. So I look forward to it. I think it's an important pick and I think he feels that way too, which is why it's sort of one of the uh, moving down the line in terms of one of the latter ones. The um, well, it, it's different this this time around. It just seems like so many things are being considered, and I, I wonder um, I wonder how this works in terms of recess appointments. Is that if if the former leader or to be former leader um, McConnell decides saying now that there won't be any of those? Is can he can he dictate that? Do you expect there will be some? What what do you knowing Senator Thune the the incoming? A majority leader. What, what are the what's going to happen on January 21st? Well, you mentioned at the very beginning of that comment that it's different this time, and it is different. Uh, uh, the president had a team led by uh, uh, Linda McMahon and Howard Ludnick that have been vetting individuals, looking at individuals way previous to the actual election. And you see these folks rolling out uh, rather rapidly. So you know they were in the pipeline and actually being considered much earlier than the election. That is much different than the first uh, Trump administration. And so I think because that is existing, that gives us the lead time when we get sworn in on January the 30th, we can then begin to have hearings, even though the president can't make the formal appointments until January the 20th when he's sworn in. But we can be ready. And I think many of these, is, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see us already have completed sort of the pre-work so that we can get these uh, quickly, efficiently. And that will lead to, I think, sort of calming down this whole question of resource, uh, recess appointments. Uh, the way I understand the Constitution, we as a body, the House and Senate, have to put ourselves into recess. Uh, the president can't just unilaterally declare that the, the Congress is in recess. Um, there is, there are provisions if we're divided on the question, and so we had a big discussion on this last night. And so I think, uh, I think what we need to do is consider these efficiently, get them up for votes, stay here all the time, and make sure that those votes go through. And I think the, that the issue of recess appointments will probably go away, and it won't be as integral part of uh, how we, how the president's going to get his cabinet through. I, we'll I do our work, also, and that should. It, yeah, I was also uh, saying it's different this time for, for some other reasons. I mean, we do have a president coming back uh, to be president again, but after when he wasn't president uh, for four years. So there's been, you know, that, that's rare. It's happened before, but uh, it's rare. And, and I can remember many um, appointments that were controversial to start and, and resulted in very contentious uh, hearings. I can never remember where you got, like, I mean, you know the names. I don't have to go over them, but maybe five, you've got five that are fairly controversial, and you've got a couple that make the other ones not even look controversial. So I don't know. How, you know what I'm saying? How does that? How does that play out? Whereas I could see some of the less controversial ones. Maybe that was the method. Maybe that was the method. Uh, I'm not going to call it madness, but maybe there was some thinking that went into that. We're going to throw a lot up here against the wall and, and most of it's going to stick. Do you think it all sticks? Well, I think they're on Capitol Hill today. I understand the vice uh, president uh, to be 
Uh, J.D. Vance has been here. I think that is a, a decided advantage this time for the president and that he has a, a, a seated senator who knows everybody, uh, in, at least in the Republican conference and probably the entire Senate. And so that will be a, a benefit. I, I think there is some method to what you're saying in terms of, for instance, Lee Zeldin was one of the first appointees as EPA administrator. Maybe, maybe that raised some eyebrows. Well, he doesn't really have that, you know, environmental background that he needs to have. Well, he's going to go through my committee and I think he's going to go through very well and quickly. And that's a key position. So I think as you see these roll out, uh, some of them obviously went, uh, also Rubio was an early one. He's going to, uh, we all have a great high opinion of Marco and his abilities to be able to lead us on the international stage. Then you get to maybe some of the more that are raising the questions. We'll go through the information that's available to us. They're going to make the rounds and meet everybody if they haven't met already and answer some of the questions in private. It, and then we'll have probably some um, some good TV watching for some of the uh, nomination hearings. Uh, that I can promise you probably as we move into January. Okay, can, can I ask you about thumbs up or thumbs down, your prediction on some specific names? Do you want to do that? You probably don't want to do that. I don't know if I want to do that. Can we do I, that? I'm probably not going to give you a good answer on that. I haven't met uh, I, many of the ones that you're probably going to ask me about. Thumbs so, up or thumbs down? I, no, it's binary. Matt Gates. Uh, that's not Thumbs fair, up. Joe. I haven't, I haven't had the. Okay, the RFK the, I Jr. I haven't had the privilege of, uh, <laughs> okay. of uh, considering these. But so this we'll, is the we elephant can move in off the room. That one. There's a few elephants <clears throat> in the room. <clears throat> it's a very crowded room in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of elephants. Speak for yourself. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> exactly. Um, here's another. Here's another thing that's different. Is, you know, it used to be you'd, you'd find these things out in the morning, and then you'd have time to, you know, uh, vet them through the news cycle. We're finding out about it, Linda McMahon, at six o'clock in the evening. So, yeah, we know President after Trump doesn't others. sleep very much. Yeah, after three <laughs> yes. other. Uh, th but Senator, you have no no, no perspective on, on on Gates. I only, I mean, RFK Jr. Uh, I, I Pete like, Seth. Well, well, see, you're, you're an example of what I'm saying. Those the, the, those last couple, you don't even care about because I'm you're saying, so because things have become unusually uh, That's what I said, yeah. normalized uh, of sorts. You know, there's, uh, a, there's a process here. We're, we're at the process. Let's let the information come forward. Uh, Senator Grassley runs the Judiciary uh, Committee. He's stated in his public statements, everything should be transparent. Everything should be a, uh, a available to the committee members. And I think, you know, we're still six to eight weeks off from this. Things can change, and and they can either get better or get worse. And we'll just have to see as they're making the rounds uh, through the Congress. All right, uh, Senator, uh, thank you. I, I mean, that's what all of us want is to live interesting lives, isn't it? And, and where you are right now, with a bird's eye view of everything that's happening, I'm I'm a little, well, I'm not envious, but um, it should be interesting for for the entire country fast, for the next. It's fast moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's fast moving. Senator, thanks.